welcome to the Fashion Grunge Podcast. I am your host, Lauren. Hi, I'm Jai. And today we're going to be talking about The Virgin Suicides, directed by Sofia Coppola, technically released in 99, but I believe premiered in 2000. So I think we're of two minds on the 20th anniversary, but it's about the 20th anniversary. So we decided to talk about this one. I'm really excited. This is a different one for us before we've been covering. Oh, this is actually episode 10. So, is it? Oh, yeah. wow. It's, so, been, it's been nine already. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. So this is kind of a different vibe compared to what we have been reviewing. So I'm kind of, I'm. this is going to be a weird kind of different one to talk about, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah, so am I, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you, okay, so what is, what was your recent thought about this? Because you just watched it, like, just watched it. Um. So I actually watched it when I was 19, 19. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was like 2002. Yeah. Um for the first time and then I probably watched it like once um after that and then last no, this morning. Actually, I we watched it this morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So um, what like two or three times? Yeah, I've only seen it like yeah, I definitely seen it only like three times. Oh, okay. Um but that's why I was like really excited as well because it's not a film that um I've seen like several times and like I just remember like certain things about it that I loved um mm-hmm. but it, it just feels like really great to to rewatch and be like oh yeah I have forgotten about that scene and you know um but yeah I mean I I really loved everything about the film um I it felt like really different now watching it than when I first watched it because I was like young, you know, like yeah. younger. <laughs> they were like what, um, thirteen to sixteen in the film, yeah. and I was nineteen when I first watched it. And um, I was student, you know, and yeah. I was with a friend who um was studying film at the time, and so we used to watch movies at his apartment, um, every weekend, pretty much. Oh, cool. Um, and yeah it's I mean this is like funny but it's not actually it's not really funny but it's um there's this place in London called Covent Garden and it's you know Covent Garden yeah Uh and it's kind of like touristy and there there are a lot of shops and everything but he lived bang in the middle of Covent Garden um somehow I don't even know how he managed to find a place like that because he was like 18 and how could you afford that but, yeah it's like isn't it really like expensive it, oh yeah yeah it's super expensive but I think he was like some sort of student hall kind of situation oh. so they had like a communal bathroom for everyone but each studio had like its own kitchen and like oh neat yeah so anyway we used to go to the rooftop because it was really hot in summer and just to just take the laptop out there and just watch mo- movies just on the oh. um yeah on like a big map sort of thing um and smoke and everything so it, it's just really cool but anyway um I I really love that um so that's the first time you saw it was when you were with your friend with my watching. friend Maurizio yeah and oh, like cool. I was 19 and then I watched it way later like maybe I don't know like five six years after that and then this morning um but yeah, I, I I mean I don't know if you want me to go like really into the story, but I'm not gonna talk about everything, but like I just really love the film and Locke's character in particular. Yeah, yeah, she's really she's like she's a weird yeah, she's a weird one. She's definitely I definitely have like some notes on the characters themselves. Yeah. Like outside of what the actors who play them. But I first saw this film in I was in high school. I think I was seventeen. Okay, it was, yeah. It was in two thousand. I rented it. Yeah. And, uh, I remember, like, I think I just remember, like, the press about it. Like, I remember seeing the trailer on TV. I already knew Kirsten Dunst. So, I I remember, like, oh, cool. And, like, let's take a moment for Josh Hartnett. I mean, he, holy crap. Like, he was literally everything and still is. Watch Penny Dreadful. It's amazing. Uh, He was great. Yeah. He, um, yeah, but this movie was, like, right after The Faculty, which yeah. is like holy shit. Yeah. Um, that's another thing we should totally do. The fact yeah, that, like, we should we should like yeah, that film actually. We yeah, because that one's like so weird in nineties like sci fi, like teen sci fi. It's like so weird. Um, but yeah, so I was like super stoked to see it, rented it, 
really liked it, bought it on tape and like have seen it 20 plus times probably. Oh, wow. um, yeah. never seen the, no, never read the book, which I actually want to do now. Um, yeah, the book sounds pretty amazing because it's yeah. always interesting to see how they translate the book into a film. Like, obviously, the book will be more. I don't know that there, there might be some some stuff they left out. Yeah, I think they make yeah, the most likely. I'm I'm sure, but it's really interesting too that I was doing some background research on the book. Uh, the author is named Jeffrey. I, I don't know if I'm going to say it right, but his last name is like Eugen Eugene Eugene mm-hmm. maybe. It was written in, or came out in 93. It took him three years to write it. And he was, I believe, like early 20s. And he had like a nine to five job that he didn't really like. And he used to write it when he would come home. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. And in the middle of him writing it, he got fired from his job and he got unemployment. And while he got unemployment, like he was finishing up this book because he kind of like needed to sell it in order to like, you know, make money and live. So he, you know, sold it and wrote it and it became really big. And this is like a great little nineties, like circle here. Thurston Moore gave a copy of this book to Sofia Coppola. What? That's yeah. insane. I- so that, yeah. Isn't that crazy? So that, yeah, that like, is crazy. He had no idea that she would love the story so much and write the screenplay. And, you know, like wanted, she said, I, you know, I watched the behind the scenes documentary because I I have that on DVD. So I was watching the behind the scenes and she was talking about like her dad is there, obviously Francis Ford Coppola, the director, Mm -hmm. and they were like showing the set and everything. And she imagined it as a film, like when she read the book, she Mm -hmm. was like, so, and she's like, I didn't want to do a movie like right away. I just all of a sudden was like, this is it. So this became her directorial debut which is so that's that's interesting when you said because i actually thought that someone else was doing a film that someone else had a script for the film and i I, apparently the production company that's what i hear oh the production company didn't really like the the adaptation or like the script basically and i'm not i can't really remember maybe like it's somewhere out there online but I think somehow I'm not entirely sure if Sofia Coppola was working on on like with these people or in the like production company perhaps, and so she really loved the story, so she wrote her own script or her own version of of the story, and then they were really impressed with that. That's how like I thought oh. it came about, but I definitely I read it somewhere, but I can't remember where. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, that's what I read on Wikipedia. Who the hell knows? I mean, Wikipedia, anyone can fucking write. So it's like somehow they didn't like the vision, yeah, like totally could the be other wrong. people, and so but she just had a, just this really amazing way of telling the story, and they really loved that, so they went for her oh. script. So yeah, we, we'll look it up and see. Yeah, what yeah. I'll, out there. I'll I'll try to find it. I was trying to look for it so I could put it in the show notes anyway i was trying to see if what's on the dvd was available on youtube and i couldn't find it right away mm-hmm. it's about like a 25 minute thing and it's like francis for coppola is there her mom's there sophia's there talking about like how she founded the authors there and it francis for coppola talks about how she wrote it and he was she was trying to get him to help her to sell it and he was like look maybe you shouldn't write this screenplay because you know if you can't sell it like you know, you're going to be really heartbroken. And she was like, and then he got it. And he was like, wow, this is like one of the best like scripts I've ever written. And -hmm. then he talks about like how they sold it and all that kind of stuff and how they got uh, like, you know, the funding and like all that kind of stuff for it. So yeah, we'll totally look it up. Yeah. I'll I'll see if I can find that. Yeah, cool. Um... But it's really cool. My friend, uh, my friend Joey, like shout out to my friend Joey. He used to work for I believe it's like one of the companies that was promoting the film at the time. And before I left LA, he was moving and like clearing out a whole bunch of random stuff. And he was like, here, I have this random book on Virgin Suicides. Like, I know you like Sofia Coppola. Do you want it? And I was like, fuck yeah. So I have this little like, which is, this is why the quarantine sucks. Because if we were together, Jai, I would be showing this to you. I'll show it to you when we uh, see again. But it's like the good um, old days. (laughs) I know. It's like a little small booklet. It's like a little magazine. It's about like 50 pages. And it's like, you know, kind of a square. It's amazing. It's got photos by Corinne Day. Oh, um, yes. From the Virgin Suicide set. That's amazing. And it's also got like a whole little profile on Josh Hartnett, a whole one on Kirsten Dunn. So wait, Corinne, Corinne, they like shot on set? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Like, oh, really? Yep. That's so yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's like ten. There's like a ten page spread. Oh wow, that's amazing! I didn't know that. That's yeah, it's really cool. cool. And then there's also a whole thing on the costumes, color, and the design with new oh, design wow, yeah. sketches. Like, I mean, the costume design. Yeah, thing. it's really oh, cool. It's so good. So, uh, yeah, I believe that is on. If you Google it, it's like the Virgin Suicides magazine. Uh, you can probably buy it on eBay or something. Like, it, it's out there. It's not like super cheap and i'm really glad that i got that i have it but yeah so that's what in the beginning when you open it i can read what the there's one photographer who actually has a thing she says uh let's see she says welcome when thurston moore of sonic youth gave sophia coppola a copy of jeffrey eugenides the virgin suicides he never dreamed she would love it enough to make a movie out of it when sophia started writing a script for it in secret she never dreamed that it would actually become a movie she, wow. told me she was doing it to see if she could actually write a feature script. Mm-hmm. A year later, she was in Toronto directing the film version of The Virgin Suicides. This book is sort of a scrapbook of the movie of the book. We wanted to take a look at the process in a way that the press wouldn't thematically, structurally, and behind the scenes. We also wanted to showcase some of the great images we'd gathered. So here you are, a little gift, something to save for you after you see the film this summer. And then it has like a whole thing it's oh, really that that's really beautiful yeah, yeah i mean beautiful. i wonder i'm sure that's true like i'm sure he gave sophia um the book but i wonder if what i read somewhere like maybe just some other production company decided to do yeah maybe um, they wanted to do the story uh, the and story they... and so they did it first but she was kind of like bro like oh she no like, like this is the way i want to do it yeah yeah um anyway yeah, but it's it's really cool. I'm I'm super excited that it was made and it I guess inadvertently it had like a pretty big effect on me. I guess I didn't think about it then, but yeah. now that I look back, I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, I I definitely remember a lot of fashion was or just even fashion magazines were really inspired by like nylon was just starting around this era, like 99 2000 mm-hmm. and like that whole like Kirsten Dunst like young indie actress vibe yeah and, like, 70s nostalgia was like really heavy in the 90s because obviously yes. like we were in the 90s so we weren't like we're, it's always like 20 years back is what only, like, it was only about. 20 years back I yeah know. it's like a long time ago <laughs> yeah yeah now it's like yeah it just seems crazy but yeah so it's really it's really cool as I started to watch it I was just like this movie is so beautiful and so sad it is it's, yeah it's both it's it's like crazy I, I feel like for me like even though it's about the, all the sisters, um, I feel like uh, Lux um, really stands out. Mm-hmm. And I feel that um, or what I really love about it is that she's sort of like sexual and like really curious, but it was told in a like really beautiful way. So she sort of appears enigmatic rather than slutty, you know, because I feel yeah. like if you, there's so many directions that that could have gone like, you know, if there's like a pretty girl in high school who's like, you know, like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, like she's seen as like slutty or whatever. But they didn't make her look that way, and even the boys, the way they talk about her, she and they knew what she was getting up to. Like yeah. when she was like kissing different boys in the roof, they they're still sort of um in awe of her. Like she's just so like this sort of like I don't know, ethereal creature almost, and um. And I also think, like, you feel kind of moved by, like, how badly they wanted to just do teenage girls um, stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. But they were so, like, overprotected by their parents. And, like, and that's really the reason why they committed suicide because, you know, they weren't allowed to do anything and they were just, like, pushed to the to their limit it's insane limit, yeah. And and to be honest, that's believable too, you know, especially back then because... Even, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can see them, but you know that in the 70s, like, families were quite, I mean, 50s to 70s, they were still quite close, and they weren't, like, they didn't, they weren't really open. Like, no, you didn't have that like kind of now. relationship with your parents where you just, like, talk about your life, and, like, what, you know, it was very much like your parents are, like, a, a authority figure. So, mm-hmm. um, and then they were religious, so that's, 
you know. Yeah, they were. They, gonna say, they had a culty vibe. Like I the know. whole family had like a culty vibe to it. Yeah, like, they a weird did. Way. And it's also like the dad seemed kind of cooler than the mom, but the mom was kind of the one that set all the rules. And but the, but the dad was like completely out to lunch, though. Like he he's was a pushover, totally obviously. Out of touch with reality. He was like talking to the plant. Oh yes, of like course. he he's was. To a plant. Yeah, yeah, he was not like. I mean, he. I feel like kind of had this very aloof um very submissive vibe like he just really was like very like run of the mill like didn't even because i mean it was he's a really interesting character i feel like he's for him to be like one of the the only males in the whole show except um in the whole film aside from trip Mm -hmm. like he the way he found cecilia oh yeah calm like he has a he's a very like strange character like he does let the mother kind of um obviously like run everything i just it's just it's just a really strange dynamic that they have as parents yeah and that's the other thing right like they you see you see like what happens with cecilia and how she dies and it's almost like the mom seems kind of upset for like one day but Oh yeah, when she's like they sitting in the room. Yeah, they don't yeah. know. They don't talk about it. She seems no. like be able to get on with her life, and the dad is like, nothing's happened, and he's watching um sports. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like even the girls didn't seem that upset. It's kind of weird. It's almost like yeah. they were like, okay, the way we're going to cope is by like ignoring what happened and just getting on with our lives. Um, but yeah, all I'm gonna say is that super religious and strict upbringing it's a bad combination so yeah. especially um, for young like when you're very young you know and you don't know yeah like, you just don't know like you ha- don't have a choice really that's that's the thing is you just don't have a choice in in what you want to like believe in or what you want to do it's just it's it, yeah it makes for a really interesting combination like you know yeah. I, don't, I don't know like how i just it just seems really I don't know this this film is weird I mean I I like that it has I kind of noticed that it definitely has like three distinct acts when mm-hmm. I don't know if a lot of other films that, I mean yeah every film really has like I guess three acts but I feel like this one is so obvious like it's very much like after Cecilia dies it's like the whole bit from the beginning to like when Cecilia dies after that the girls enter school and mm-hmm. then it and then it becomes like a completely different film where it's like Trip and Lux and you see this like kind of almost normal high school interaction and then it goes to like one false move shuts it down and the they're boys, in lockdown yeah. yeah they're in lockdown they can't get out and then like it's over and like yeah. just, they all happen in these like very distinct chapters and you kind of see how the girls I feel like they almost age like 20 years as if they knew that they weren't going to like be around that much longer because after Cecilia died, I feel like they kind of, you know, Lux started kind of like, she was kind of interested in trip at first. She was hard to get, but then she just kind of like, like lit, like went into it and she just seemed like all of a sudden she was homecoming queen. All of a sudden she, you know, like had this guy and, you know, everybody noticed her and everybody, like all the girls were so happy at that school dance. And then it just was like shut down. Like they mm-hmm. almost knew this was going to happen. And then it just kind of like fell apart in this like strangely like melancholy way, <laughs> you know, like when it all like went down. Yeah. But I mean, it sort of makes sense that, that they, they were trapped you know, like yeah. they trapped, they were taken out of school, and this is like, what's how many of them? It's like four, four left. Four of them, yeah. Four of them left, and they're basically in their bathroom, and their uh, their mom um burns Lux's records. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, it's kind of oh, it's so sad. It's like you imagine being like that age, and then. I mean, it's kind of not funny, but it's funny in a way when she's like, mom, it's keys, please. No. I know. And she's like, no, give me that. And, you know, she burns the the vinyl. But, um, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's kind of like a strange film, but it's so beautiful that I feel like it's a really good marriage and it's like, it's a really good balance as well. You it know? is, it totally is. What because are you- it's beautiful and then it's sad, but then it's, and it's weird, but. Yeah, it has all those elements I really love. 
I, yeah, it I totally does. Yeah. I was I was gonna ask you, what are your thoughts? Um, let's run down kind of the character. So, what are your thoughts on Cecilia as a character? Like, she's thirteen. I love her style choices. Oh, I love how gosh. she wears like this oversized lace dress. She like, wears it the in the whole yeah, the whole time she wears that beautiful. I actually that's in my fashion notes. Like just yeah. these long because to be honest, like I'm not a huge I think like, I love seventies fashion and I appreciate it, but it's not stuff that I would particularly wear. Like but that lace dress, you totally will wear that, you know? It's just so pretty. Um oh, but cool. Yeah, I don't know. Like her character is kind of weird because she's thirteen. I mean, yeah. I, I honestly didn't even. I mean, I guess you could be depressed at thirteen, but I mean, she had like for her to try to kill herself is kind of like I I don't know. And also, you think you don't really know it because she's part of this big family and she has sisters, so you. You think that she had it easier almost because she was like the youngest one, right? Yeah. And maybe she, I don't know, like you're the youngest, you're kind of. Um, like the baby. I feel like that, you get yeah, away exactly. with anything, right? Like, yeah. Kind of. That's how it seems. I mean, it just seemed that she carried so much sadness. And it almost like, I don't know if that's just how they're telling the story. And it would be really great to read the book. And yeah, see if it makes it's me want to read the book now. Because it's like, they didn't seem to be that close until Cecilia dies. And then they're just together all the time, even in school, you know? It's really weird, too, that she is, she's very, like, cynical for her age. She's very, like, jaded and cynical. Like, when the doctor, when she is in the hospital oh, yeah. after her first attempt, and the doctor's like... <laughs> You know, why were you trying to take your life? Like, you're not even old enough to know how bad life gets. And she's like, you really like, don't you've know. You've never been like a 13 year old girl. Yeah. You've never been like, a 13 year old girl. I know. I was like, wow. I was like, how did she, like, how did she get like this with a mom that's so detached and harsh at the same time and yeah. a dad that's completely out to lunch? Like, how did she get like this when the rest of them seem to just be on a very, like, kind of like, I don't know, like head in the clouds kind of. Uh, relationship although I don't know because we never really it's really interesting too that Cecilia and Lux are the only two that we really find out anything about yes like Bonnie and really Mary and Teresa, yeah we don't much. Yeah. yeah we don't really know about them I don't know if the book is like that and it's just kind of more Lux focus which I I feel like it probably is but I don't I don't know it's like oh, we'll have to do like some kind of follow-up <laughs> when we like yeah if we re like read the book and stuff but uh yeah I feel like she it's really interesting to see that she's so just jaded and she's just like so cynical about the world and she's 13 i mean like like how did she get like that you know it's not like she's an older sister who's like that you know and she wants to be like an older sister it's really interesting and it's crazy that the the suicide attempt that she does in the beginning is very much real like it's yeah. very much not a cry for help, like pills or something that you could like potentially live through. It's like very kind of violent. Like when you see her yeah. in the tub, it's very much like she intended to die. Like that. I mean, it, it, yeah. It's very like, oh my gosh, you know, like it's really like upsetting. And then that, then when the guy describes how he found her, like one of the neighborhood oh, boys. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, how he like no. sneaks into people's houses, and it's kind of like you know he's like telling everyone in the neighborhood about like how he sneaks into people's houses and you know like how he found her and everything I was like gosh that's but I think that I mean if you think about it right if she's 13 and she has really strict parents and she's not allowed to do anything and I remember like it said somewhere at some point like I think a friend or someone tells the, the parents like you know, you need to. I think after Cecilia come, like attempts to mm -hmm. kill herself the first time, out, um, the doctor tells the dad like they need to have more yeah. activities and that she lie. needs to interact with like boys. Yeah. Um, and so they start making an effort. So it, it seems that up to that point, they didn't have that. They didn't spend any time with friends or especially like from the opposite sex, right? Oh, no, so yeah, definitely not. Maybe that's enough to drive you crazy. I mean, I remember being even younger and just thinking like this is not normal I think I was seven when I was in a catholic school like all girls school mm -hmm. and I hated it and you're young and you know that it's not it doesn't feel normal to just yeah. be interacting with girls you know that's true yeah it's not somehow it's just not a healthy environment 
Like you need to interact for your own development. You need to interact with both sexes. I think that's and why so, it feels yeah. very culty. Like they had all these kids to form a cult because they kind of didn't want any outside like influence. Like if there were five girls, they would all essentially hang out together. So yeah. they, I wonder how it was when they were young, you know, in school, like, did they just, I mean, they're all so close together. Aren't they all like a year apart? Um, yes, they About? are. 13, yeah. 14, 15, 16 is so, the oldest, yeah. Yeah, so they literally have just been together, like, <laughs> their entire lives. There's not even a gap where it's like four-year gap or something, where like one would have friends in another grade just because they're so much older. Like, I wonder if it was like that on purpose like you know I wonder like so much about the parents like in general mm-hmm. you know, when they had this family like how they how they were with it it's just like it's really interesting yeah what do you what do you think about the boys um I mean I love the boys I think it's yeah I like them I think that's how you I mean it's kind of like they're explored and they show how innocent boys are like at that sort of at that age and also in that decades you know yeah it's, it's so believable like those characters like um there's that boy who's really short and looks super young for his age but he's probably like 16 or 15 but he looks 12 yeah you know? yeah mm-hmm. he even drives i think oh, that's right. and, yeah, i was gonna say the one who drives at the end yeah he's like yeah he's like i can drive and um i was like I, you <laughs> i know and you i think can. it's it's really sweet how they they love the girls and they're kind of obsessed with them you know and they're like it's their world. Like that's what they do. They go to um this boy's house and they spy on them and stuff. And I don't know. I think it's just like really sweet and naive, and I, I just really like it. It's very yeah. different from Trip, right? Because he's older yeah. and he's kind of like a popular kid and he's really good looking. And... For, like those football guys, like it's very different from the boys in school. Who yeah, are, like, talking about like Lux, and they're like, "Yeah, I made out with her." Like, "Yeah, I hooked hooked up with her." Like, you know. And then you see these boys who are completely innocent, who almost respect them and like think that they're women. You know, they think yes. that they're, like these young women who are really complex, and they understand that they're complex and don't treat them as just like you know, just like dumb schoolgirls. And I think they that's why they gravitate to them in the end when they're on that lockdown. I think because they know that their like intentions are completely pure. They can trust them. And, you know, they just, like, they want that outside connection. It's, like, perfect that there's the same number uh, yeah. of boys that, that are with them. I think there are four of them, aren't there? I don't think there are five. There's it's four of them. Four, yeah. Right? yeah. So, yeah, that's, like, it's really interesting how they show that, that the two sides of, like, how boys can be, like, in just a few years, how they change. You know, these boys are a little bit younger, I think, than Trip and, like, his friends. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And I just, I mean... I, I do like Tripp's character, but I am not... I love annoyed, the but... layers of Tripp's character. I love that he's not just, like, this kind of dumb, heartthrobby guy. I love the fact that he has two dads. Love it. Oh, yeah. No, like, that is that really cool. Is great. It's yeah. cool. Um, it's <laughs> ahead, of, um, ahead of the time, really. Yeah. But, yeah, that's really cool. And the only thing I, I feel that they could explore a bit more is why he left Locks there at the um he does talk called? about it but he only says like I feel like it's kind of like not good enough you know like he seems to be in love with her so why would you even leave her and he kind of just says oh that's I can't really remember what he says but it's very short like he's talking to himself basically in his bedroom just saying like I just left her there um and it doesn't make sense like kind of like I think well, he's not. You, you said in his, you said in Trip's uh, bedroom. Is that what you said when he's older? No, no. Like he, there's a scene where it looks like it's the morning after or the morning when oh, she yeah, yeah. Her, and oh, he's kind of yeah, he is in his bedroom. Yeah, he's yeah. in his bedroom, just kind of I don't know, like thinking, what did I just do? But yeah. they, I feel like they don't really. It's kind of confusing because he's meant to be in love with her, and then he I just so leaves her. I think I think he was I guess I, I think he was really scared because I know when he when you they have that clip of him later like as an adult and he's talking about it and he's like he's like um you know it was really weird like I don't he said I don't even know why I left that night he's like it was weird that like I didn't even care how she got home like I, I don't you know I, I don't really know why and then he's kind of like you know but 
but like i really did love her like it's just like another weird enigma that i don't think you're gonna know much like you don't know the real reason that they committed suicide i mean Mm. they they do paint it as you kind of think it's because of their strict upbringing but there really is no definitive answer why it's very much like it can be a whole host of things Mm. i mean um because it easily they could have wait you know they could have just grown up and just been like this fucking stuff yeah just ran away or gone you know and done a million other reasons and i think especially according to the book and what sofia coppola was saying that like the whole point of the film is that you don't there is no definitive answer like yes that is what happened but that's not exactly like a reason it's not meant to be a reason why they all committed suicide especially like mm-hmm. there's no reason why they called the boys over that night to just dis- to find them you know find they, them, yeah. it's very like it's you know there are a lot of things that don't make sense that you think oh well this is why but they're never i think suicide's really hard in general to just define because it obviously is such a like personal thing and like you know it's and i think it's kind of i think it was more of like a commentary on like we don't know you know Mm -hmm. like this is just a really incredible tragic story that happened and we want to try to understand it and that's why the boys i think this is like told from the aspect of 25 years earlier so they're like i love giovanni rabisi as the narrator too i forgot to point that i love i mean i love him anyway but i love that he's the narrator so he talks about how when they're even in their 40s which i would assume they'd probably be in their 40s now or like late 30s that they always like when they're all together they all still talk about it and still talk about them and go over the evidence like they're still trying to figure out why like it's like all these years later it's never really been a cut and dry answer for them and it's just like i yeah i really like how there's just still this huge sense of mystery and the way they kind of discover things about them, the way they kind of fantasize about things that they would, you know, that, that the girls would be doing or they would be talking about. Yeah. What they're talking about. And like, yeah, I mean, I just love the way that they like their imagination is just like, like the way that they are. I just love the way that they're painted like in their head. Yeah, And I love the fact that it's told by one of them. And pretty much a story is told from, their point of view or like from their eyes I think that's really interesting yeah totally. and they even say like when they find their they find the diary and then they know that they collect um what do they call um the catalogs catalogs yeah the travel, right? yeah, the travel like how- and then they order the same ones and they're kind of creating the story on like the story on their own of like what they're like and like yeah. what you know it's their futures and like yeah traveling with them and it's so dreamy it's, it's just really cool and those are some of my favorite scenes are like the fantasy scenes like when they travel near oh the yeah end. and they like the... put them in like random places yeah, in the like, world yeah it's really cool like i really like how that was I feel you can tell that Sofia Coppola like is also a photographer too in this film because so much of it is very much like cinematic and very yes. like a lot of it's mm-hmm. still frames and you can tell a lot of it's photo. You see a lot of slideshows of photos and you can just tell that like, oh, this is a photograph. And so is that. And like, yes, even how it opens up, how the it's film just her style, yeah, so, just style. Um, so strong and like, and you see it like even now. It's oh, pretty, yeah. I mean, it's not exactly like she's not, you know, she doesn't do the same every time, but even didn't she do that? Um, didn't she do that collaboration with Mark Jacobs? So like, not collaboration, but didn't she sh- like do the video, the the com- the commercial Daisy for the perfume? I think so. Yeah, like the early yeah. ones. Because you can really see it when you yeah. see that um commercial um ad, whatever. It's pretty much her vibe you know and, and it's kind of they're, they're friends too i think they obviously yeah. work together like several times throughout the years like so yeah, but mark jacobs it's um i don't know that that commercial for daisy would even it's got this vibe like kind of uh the virgin suicide sort of aesthetic yeah you know um it's been cool. all over the internet i feel like since oh yeah it's come out like, it's definitely a film that's been it's so iconic yeah I mean, it's so iconic yeah because like there's so many people who've been influenced by that. And even, like, when I was, I don't know, 16 to 19, I was pretty much in that world, like, vintage, retro, and we used to, like, 
wear like 60s and 70s dresses like yeah, I had bell bottoms. yeah I was yeah like bell bottoms person and it was that kind of cute sort of um pixie haircuts and you know like I would. long floral dresses I mean yeah I, I did it but it didn't I don't even know how either but it didn't really suit me but I did it anyway so. yeah, uh, I've, <laughs> I've never had my hair that short I look like a boy not pretty um but yeah it's and even like if you think about like the 90s and like grunge and stuff it's pretty like like they were a lot of stuff like that in the 90s even yeah. you know it's all like 70s sort of um vibes like ringer tees came back in the 90s and like floral print dresses i'll say this well. goes into my fashion section so yeah you're, you're totally right yeah anyway yeah let's uh Sorry, that's not next, is it? Is it? Well, Do yeah. About I mean, fashion I, mood. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about fashion. Um. Okay. What are your favorites. What are your like? What's your? I'm trying to think. I was trying to guess. Like, I know that you like this era, like this, like 70s, like vintage era. And I was trying to guess, like, what would, what were your standout, like, pieces or like? Well, so it's uh, funny actually because I, I, that part of the 70s is not really my favorite for my own style for my personal style like I, I appreciate it but I don't the whole like pretty dress with like puffy sleeve and like floral print dresses that is not really my thing mm-hmm. I'm more like studio 54 I was gonna say, you're more thing. glammy yeah it's yeah, like that like that 70s. that trend um in the 70s I love you know kind of like you know like big, like big, big 70s stuff. this is like suburban American yes exactly suburban but I appreciate 70s. it as in like I know it's like it, it's just it's so beautiful and also I, I like it in that sense like even for interior design like or for inspiration I love like I love that, that aesthetic or like really kitschy sort of over the top yeah. curtains you know there is a scene in the film and it's basically a neighbor watching the news about the girl oh yeah um, Cecilia. that room is so incredible like it's My really neighbor. over the top. Just, I know your neighbor has a place like she that. She right? literally okay. has yeah. like a time capsule house. Yes. Like I need to somehow figure out a way to. Please. Ask. Yeah. Well, I wanted to use it for a shoot, but I know we've been talking about it for yeah, years now. For years, but I, I might even just ask if I can just shoot the interior. Like I don't even care about doing a shoot in there at this point. I kind of just want to take photos of it. Point. Exactly before it anything has happens. like. Yeah. It's not even 70s. It's like 50s. Like it is. Her yeah, you told me. Is about. like it's bright turquoise. She has like the old, the really old fridge, and like old toaster oven from like the fi- like mid 50s. Like and like the stove, and they all work. Like it's crazy. It's insane. Like I really need to take photos of it because it's like really very time capsule, and it's very much like it's even older than than this film, but. Some elements of this film are very fifties too, like that one yes. we're talking about. That well, that's the thing. I feel like you you see that everywhere, really. Like because not everyone is gonna go, um, is gonna be up to like, you know, the trends and stuff. So in the seventies, a lot of homes look very sixties or fifties, mm-hmm. you know. So and that was kind of decent. It was like fine. Mm-hmm. And so that lady's house is incredible. It has these big curtains, a lot of pink. Yeah, it's really bright. Like lots of um adornments and like. Um, China and stuff like this really busy flowers and everything and I feel that I, I mean I appreciate it and I like it like I wouldn't have my apartment like that but it's kind of um I don't know it's, it, it reminds me of my childhood and my grandma had like her house like that oh, not cool. as oh, like pink or anything but it was really sort of 70s and 60s and some a lot of um 50s elements and I feel like Obviously, I would love to do a shoot with, with like that sort of set design, but for me, it's kind of my childhood, you know, and just yeah. like running around my grandma's house, and you know, the rooms are incredible and and stuff. It's just very dreamy. But um, fashion wise, I don't love the frumpy dresses for me, but it's um, it, it's just really it really comes together in the film, and it, yeah, it just works it, so well, and it's just beautiful to see, you know. Even though I don't, I wouldn't wear that. And, but except for that lace dress, which I love, oh, um, I think is. that's my favorite because Lux wears a lot of cool things like this strapless top, and but it's not really again, it's not stuff that I will wear, you know. But it, it looks great on her, and it looks just really cool. Um, if anything, I'll I'll tell you what, like. 
Tripp's outfit oh, and God. the prom that you don't understand. Oh, the brown, that, the brown, the red. Dark. It's I think it's dark red it's velvet. Dark red? Oh, okay. It's a red velvet suit oh, and okay. with flared trousers and these aviator sun- sunglasses. Like that, I will wear. Like that's me, basically what the boy wears. But I, I love that outfit so much, and because he's so tall, I mean, he looks incredible. Oh, I can't even talk about that. His hair looks kind of funny, but I mean, I the way. You know, <laughs> I know, that's why it looks funny, I think, because yeah. it's just really thick yeah. and it kind of sits at when he has a middle part and it just looks kind of odd. But um, yeah, that, that's me for fashion. What about you? Um, okay, my favorite fashion, I do like the girls' fashion. My favorite fashion in general is any of the the kids in like 70s leisure wear. Oh like, yeah. I love when the girls are all in their rooms when like the priest opens the door and they're literally all wearing like this very like, like they're wearing like pajamas but also it's like that pastel like 70s Mm -hmm. like and how i love how like when the guys when you see them just like out like the guys wear those like polos those like striped polos that like all the boys wore in the 70s and like just i really love all the the leisure wear more than like the dressy stuff like i love what they wear when they're not going to like the dance yeah i know what you mean yeah like i love all that vibe yeah and even like I mean, I, I'm not. I don't think that's in the film, but it's definitely in in a photo. Maybe I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Corinne Day who shot that. But there is this really famous fo- photo of the film where all the girls are laying down in the bed, like on on the bed, and there is like um like a bra hanging over a I think cross that's in the film. Is I it? Think, I don't yeah. remember that scene, but isn't that like, when the priest walks in? maybe i think it's when they and then they're all literally just sitting there some are on the bed some are like upside down with their head like down facing out it's kind of harder to to describe but but yeah i think unless it's it could be a photo but there's a photo out there from the film and like the room room. they're all laying down in one bed and there is this bra pink bra hanging over the cross that's just above the bed and it's just such a beautiful photo and yes that is a photo actually now that's a photo right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, that is a photo yeah yeah i yeah i agree with you i feel like those are the coolest things i I feel that they're sort of gowny pajamas they wear they're white it's just Again, it just looks really dreamy, kind of like they're angels or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I because that. they're, like, all blonde and so pretty as well. Yeah. I love when that newscaster, when they're, like, standing in front of that tree, and she's like, see those 90s? I want the girls in the 90s. <laughs> and then she's like, I want to get them. I want to get them where... And then they all, like, run in the house. And then when she's, like, ready to, like, film it, they all, like, run in the house. Yeah, so that's actually, like, that's actually that's actually one of my favorite scenes. Oh, is it? <laughs> that's uh, one of my three favorite scenes, actually. Oh, let's talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack, not mm-hmm. scenes. Okay, cool. No, no, no. I mean, like right now. Yeah, let's talk about the soundtrack, and then then we'll get to our scenes. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, the soundtrack is incredible. Like, it's not music I listen to often. Like, it's not stuff that I will play except Air. I love Air. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say. So, like the score, which was done by Air. By Air, yeah. One yeah. song was composed for the film, and then another was from their album. I oh, think. cool. Um, that playground love song is that the one they did for the film? Yeah, there's like the one that's uh, in French. That's from the previous album, but oh, the okay, one cool. in English, that's the one they did for the movie. Um, but I mean, they have like such classics in there, like All Green and uh-huh. that song, um, Ren, I'm Not In Love uh-huh. by um, Heart. Uh, well, they have Heart, yeah. yeah. It's just, those are probably the songs that um, stand out the most for me. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I love the other ones, but I don't necessarily know all of the musicians. Like, I know the songs, like, I know the music, but I don't, it's not people that I follow, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you? For me, uh, I I do like the score a lot, but I have a very specific, um, I guess, attachment because all throughout university, I listen to the non-score of Virgin Suicides every time I studied. 
Oh, really? So all of wow. the 70s classics. And there are also is, and if I'm, I'm looking now and I'm correct, one of the first things that I made sure to save when I downloaded Spotify was the Virgin Suicides, like the various artists that are on oh, the that's track, really not cool. the score. Although it is on the score, like the Playground Love is on the soundtrack, but mm-hmm. I didn't, da- I didn't ever got the actual score because I think they did a whole album. I think Air did a whole album that was just the score. If I'm not mistaken, um, um, I I don't know. I can't remember really. I will look it up. It sounds familiar, actually. Like they probably put them all. Yeah, they did. It's it's the one that has like the pink cover. That, oh, with the the, the yeah. Face. Oh. yeah, the face. That one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The original score. So that one is literally like mostly instrumental, and then I think it has playground love on it. But I I like the. I mean, I like that one, but I like the one that's the the soundtrack, which is like the playlist. Mm-hmm. and it's great it's got like sticks you know like come sail away like in the the song um i mean in the dance you know when like the oh yeah calling. that's the thing i know i i know the songs like i've heard them but i don't know them oh uh, well. you know, like, i'll I don't send know. you the soundtrack it's yeah it's great like i, I was, feel like it's, it's sorry really yeah good. yeah yeah that's the thing i feel like even though it's 70s and i love that decade i feel like i'm more the up the other side of the the thing like like disco and like kind of psychedelic rock or like progressive rock and yeah or psychedelic whatever and the listening of the seven rather than the more poppy mellow music and fashion you know but but i mean it's cool and i definitely love a lot of the songs um i just feel like the one the only one that has like a sort of like um sentimental value for me or whatever is that that, that i'm not in love it's a british band oh 10 cc yeah they yeah. um it's such a cheesy song almost because a they song, it's a great song yes but they play that they used to play that a lot in clubs oh like, wow that's so, so i used to go to these like it wasn't really my local but it was like, the nearest club we had when i was like 17 um it's called it's in new cross uh, it's called the venue, and so they played sort of cheesy music too, like classics, like oh, cool. um eighties and seventies, and and it was just like a real kind of eclectic sort of. But but yeah, they they would play that sometimes at the end of the night, like about four a.m. Oh no! So way. it's just it's just funny, you know, because we'd be like really wasted and we'll be singing along and be really emotional, like to the song. So yeah, oh. it's it's just funny times. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, I definitely am more of the other side of the 70s. I I mean, I enjoy disco. I think it's cool, but I'm definitely more on that like easy listening pop like type. I like that kind of pop 70s like. So, do you like ABBA? Or do you like no, ABBA? Not really. No. Not that's really. too much, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little It's too I much mean, for me. I don't mind like some but... of the big ones like what like Dancing Queen and like Mamma Mia or whatever. Yeah. Like that's about it. Like I'm 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 not like going to go deep in yeah, it just feels that if we had been, I know for a fact, and I know this, if you and I had been around at the time, there's no way we would have, like, that would have been, like, listening to, like, Daft pop punk. now. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just too poppy for us, I think. Oh, yeah, don't, you don't think we'd be into it anyway? No, we wouldn't. We would yeah, be probably. more, like... I would be like, like Rogan and Seth Rogen, and then we're like, disco sucks. <laughs> when they go, yeah, I can't see you into disco, but would you be into the rock? You know, like yeah, I'd be into the rock Grateful the Dead. Like, De- Grateful Dead, I feel like is more of those like that, like stoner, like late stuff. Oh yeah, rock, like for sure. And, and Pink Floyd. Yeah, Floyd. Yeah, everything yeah. Freaks and Geeks is pretty much like kind of into. Yes. So they, uh, oh my god. Geeks. All the stuff in that, like all the bands and all the music in that show is so good. We really need to like if if we end up becoming some kind of like household name and end up be having a Patreon, <laughs> uh and if we do end up reviewing shows, I definitely want to do like an episode by episode on Freaks and Geeks. I, yeah, you, you've been talking about it for a long time. Yeah, man, because I feel yeah. like there's only like one or two shows out there and tons of people know it and love it, and I feel like you know, I feel like they're maybe we're they're just waiting for people to just review it, and no one, no one's done it. You know, I guess, so, I, I guess everyone's waiting for you to do it, or us to do it, or someone. For to us, do it. You yeah. love it though. So you, it, it was great. It was a good cool show, even though like I watched it when I was really old, like last year. What do you mean, like for the first time? Yeah, I never oh, watched shit, it. Really? I think I watched like two episodes when like a long time ago, but like 
that, that was it. Oh man, I literally yeah. taped it off of TV. Like no, I that watched was... it on. Because when did that come out? 99. When did that come out? Ninety nine. Yeah, no, I, I was not into like shows then. Or mm-mm. yeah, I was because it was during the era of like when Buffy was on and like everybody watched Dawson's Creek and like, it was just like their teen shows were just massive in America anyway. Like it was like, did, did you say 99? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, like they, they, didn't, they didn't show that in the UK. I, say, I don't they think it probably didn't make it to the UK cause it didn't even know here. It like, I'm sure it came here. out like on cables, like, yeah, probably. Later on, but not not at the time. I, I was not into shows at all, at all. I was watching movies and I was going to clubs. I was like club. I was like actually <laughs> clubbing, like way going like think of like glow sticks and like clubs. Yeah, and you know, um, wear really bizarre outfits like that. That was me basically. I was like, that when I was like seven. I think like seventeen, like uh, like a- end of sixteen, early seventeen year. I was into that kind of thing. But it wasn't like, yeah, I don't know. You were obviously way cooler, and you grew up in a place Aww. where you could do. Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> I don't think you would have been you're really friends cool. Team. You would have been like way too cool for me. I would have been like, hey, let's talk about Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Did you watch yesterday's episode? Well, no, I in fact I exactly needed a friend like you at that age because <laughs> I was hanging out with people that were a lot older than me and getting up to no good. Okay, like I was the youngest. Like if I was sixteen, I was going out with like twenty-three year olds to these clubs. Oh and goodness, it was not a hard one to meet home. that far older than you like I guess here it's just like if you're 16 there's just so many people around you that are your age that is mm. like I mean I I mean I'm sure some people do but it's also like very weird here too like if you're 23 and hang out with 16 year olds like you're probably going to jail like most likely but but well now but not back then I feel like I don't, think about I, it. I don't it, was know. Different. it was different back then definitely I guess. I, I mean, my that. my mom knew that I was hanging out with people that were 23, and she was like, okay, I guess that's what kids do now, so. I guess, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know, because I don't know. I mean, now there's just like, or I don't know, maybe it's a, I mean, I don't know. People, uh, like, send in some comments about this. Maybe we need some other opinions. I'm not really sure, like, how it goes, if it was a big deal then, or versus now, like. I, I honestly can tell you that there's one thing I remember that is basically hanging out with all the people. And my even my mom, who's kind of strict, was like, okay, I guess, you know, that's oh, fine. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's yeah. what you do. Like, I mean, my boyfriend... When I was six, well, when I was fifteen, he was nineteen, and and my uh, to come to pick me up, and my mom was just like, oh, okay, I guess. But um, Europe also has that's... a different take on ages. America is very like puritanical. When it oh, that comes, is like, true. Ages. Yeah, the whole like drinking at twenty one. Oh like, yeah, twenty one. That is so weird. It's like, like, and that's the thing is like now, like I feel like it. That's a huge. That's a big cultural divide. Europe mm-hmm. has a very like. Like I mean, like just based just on, liberal like, and like, yeah, and, like oh, it, consent right. laws and things. Like they're a big deal here, and they're basically like, you know, you kind of sort of can't even be in the same room. Like it's like why if you're 23 and you're with someone who's 16, like no, like no, like there's kind of it seems like there'd be no excusable reason why they'd be in why you'd be hanging out with them. Like if there was some kind of I, I feel like here the way like it kind of is here. Um, yeah. but I, I can see in other countries it not being like something that's as big an issue, but America's kind of puritanical like that. You wouldn't think, but I mean, you kind of know now cause you've lived I here mean, for longer. I've been here for two years and the one thing I still can't wrap my head around, and I didn't before cause everyone knows about spring break, that, oh, yeah, the okay. fact that all these kids go, um, on spring break and they get absolutely wasted uh-huh. and like, I don't know. It's just so weird. Like, but I guess it's because they're not allowed to drink until they're twenty one, yeah. so they they go, just go wild. Yeah. And they, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just not. weird. But wait, back on, back on. Uh, Sorry, back yeah. On from uh, like talking about age of consent laws, which I guess would be a whole other podcast. But yeah, but, talk um, about that. Yeah, like, do you people? <laughs> um, but not against the law. But you know, do you within the law? Um, but uh, let's talk about our favorite scenes to like. Okay. You know, to like get get on here well i have three okay um, okay what are yours i, I love one when each. They... okay so what's your first one 
And then I'll the first one, okay, yeah, sure, let's do that. I love it when they um, stand around the, the tree holding hands in their long oh, yeah. sort of PJs. Oh, they look just like really pretty gowns. But I just feel like it's really naive and beautiful. They're like saving their tree and they're all, I, I don't know. I, I just really love that. I don't know yeah, why. I, I, like just, that. I just feel that in a weird way, it's like, is it maybe because it reminded them of Cecilia because they yeah, that was like they used to tree. hang around the tree and um they painted that bit of white right at the beginning with Cecilia, right? It was like the thing they did together. I don't know. I feel like there is more to the tree. Kind of like maybe it represents her. more than yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And like taking it down um, would really be like she's gone. Yeah. So I, I love that. Yeah, I like that okay. one too. What about you? Um one of my favorite scenes is near the beginning when that boy who's over for dinner who oh, yeah. <laughs> when he like is it's like so weird. I love when he goes up to Cecilia's room and like yeah. kind of like sees and explores all these things that like girls have in their rooms. Like he like looks at the perfume and he's like in the bathroom and he's like and I love how you get this like kind of like visual portrait of yep. a girl. Mm -hmm. Like just a young, a really young girl. And then you see like he sees like all the tampons. <laughs> in the closet and then like and then like Lux is like hey and then she just like opens the door and then he's like just like kind of so awkward but I I love that whole like the whole like when he like enters like her world almost and he like sees yeah all these little things and no you're right I really you like know that. what? that's actually at least one thing that I love about that scene is that it's just visual like yeah it's like because photographs it, yeah it's exactly it's like photographs and I love the um when he comes to the bathroom at the beginning and there's just this shot of all the lipsticks and perfume mm -hmm. um in like I think it's a cabinet or yeah something. it's like a medicine cabinet or something yeah it's just so beautiful like yeah, I, I love that as a still photograph you know just um yeah, it's just really cool, and and then all the collage and stuff on the walls. Yeah, yeah it's just really visual. Yeah, yeah it, really it, like it's that. true. I forgot. That's a really cool scene. I like that scene. What's your next one? Um, when when the boys call them but play songs mm -hmm. and yeah, only play I'm songs too. and do it back and forth and not words are exchanged. Like, yeah, I think that's the beauty of it. They never said a thing and they just playing music. Yeah, uh, I love that. Oh, I love that. You know, it's kind of like it's so I mean, dreamy. It, it is, and I feel like I mean, who doesn't like music? You know, music speaks in so many ways, and I feel it's just really cool that they just basically communicating like there's no need to say anything you know yeah. just playing their favorite songs and to each other and i don't know i think it's just really cool it was really cool i like that was one of my scenes too i mean i have a few so that was one of mine okay um so you go next yeah. another one was um i really like when the boys are reading cecilia's diary and 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 like they're like they're flipping through it and you know they're like oh like you know she's writing about trees like how many times can a girl write about trees and then they're like wait wait here's something about lux and they're like and they talk about how like lux lost it over this guy kevin and she like and then they go into this like dream sequence of them imagining like cecilia reading it out and she's like lux lost it over kevin haynes and like mom found all of her underwear and she wrote like kevin and all of her underwear and made her like bleach it out and then she's like lux was crying on the bed and then it shows this like visual and it's that same martin uh la song by air oh yeah and it's like and it's all like sunny and like i just love and i love how they're just like flipping through it and it's like this montage and then rabisi comes over and talks about like they're kind of more like philosophical like reasons he was like we like learned about their lives through this journal we learned of like they were women and like disguise and like i love that whole scene it's probably like one of my favorite scenes yeah no that is a really great scene actually yeah the whole um secret yeah like that. yeah that's like the beginning i think before you see that the um towards the end when you see them with, like going different traveling places that's like the first time that you see them like kind of fantasize about like this whole like di like diary entry it's really cool yeah it's really poetic mm -hmm. uh, no i love that i really like that um yeah mine are, are random i guess and kind of weird I, for i don't know like i like them for for different reasons like yeah what's your next one my last or one last is one, yeah. um right at the end like when they go to that party 
in that mm-hmm. house. It's like, what is it, prom? I, I don't- it's like a debutante. Like a, it's like a society thing where like young women like come out. It's almost like a bar mitzvah for like rich people. Okay. Not, yeah, like, it wasn't paid what religion. that was. Yeah, was, it's like, not like religion. It. It's like, like society girls like are like 16 and they're like, here's my daughter. You know, okay, like yeah, these big dress. Yeah, it's like a rich society kind of thing. Yeah, so I, I like it because of um the visuals there because it's this really cool house, but then everyone is just wearing black and white, right? Mm-hmm. Like the men are wearing suits, and the women, all the girls are wearing like long white dresses, and mm-hmm. but then it, there's a theme, and it's asphyxiation, mm-hmm. and it's so weird because. What, I mean, why would you pick that as a theme, right? But then they they have all these like touches of or glimpses of green, like lime green, and yeah. there's this mask that this girl is wearing, and it's green glitter basically. It's oh like, wow! It's a it's a hideous mask, obviously, because it's like really dark, you know. Yeah. But then it's it's basically made of um green glitter almost. Do you remember it? I remember remember the the party because it was like there was a toxic waste spill in the neighborhood and like there was a terrible smell throughout the whole neighborhood. So that's why they made the theme asphyxiation. And like the guy, the narrator is saying like, he's like, I, and most people, this is like after the girls committed suicide. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, most of the debutantes were so annoyed that like they came out in a season that's going to be known for its bad smell because I guess it just smelled like this horrible toxic waste throughout the the town there was like a leak in like the the plant like the power yeah so yeah, it was, I, like, mean, yeah was, I remember the, that I remember it being green and like yeah. I remember a glitter mask though yeah so it's it's because it's so green and you can't really but if you pay attention oh, it's cool, basically this girl is holding it and it's before they move on to the punch when they kind of oh yeah um yeah so basically it's two scenes together it's basically this girl about to put her mask on and it's green green glitter and the next scene is basically a close-up of this fountain with like green green drink and i just love that like because basically is girls wearing white gloves with pearl necklace sorry pearl bracelets Mm -hmm. and then they're holding their glass with um with a green drink i just love that as like a scene you know yeah that is cool i love the colors and the concept and it's just so like weird and dark but yeah i don't know i just I, i just love that like it is really cool. I have I have two more, but okay. I mean my the the next one I have is uh when Lux wakes up on the field uh after oh, yeah. having sex with Trip. I just love the like complete like dawn light that's blue like that. Like like when you wake up and the sun is like just about to rise, like right before it gets light. I just love that light and I love that shot of her, which everyone's probably seen of her on the grass. Like in it, you can tell that it's like the sun's just about to come up for morning. And I love how you see the car and like, I love how she goes home and it's just really quiet. And yeah, and you no, just know really like cool. it's coming. Like you just kind of like know like this, like, I feel like it's like a really good ending of like the second act. Like, you know, like this is when the huge shift is going to come because everything has been fine up until now, you know, like she had a good time with Trip. She like thinks she's going to like, have this like kind of thing but then she like wakes up and he's gone you know and it kind of like oh gosh it kind of like sets this like weird tone um the, the other one i had wasn't really like a scene it's just i love the final pan of the house when they leave when the parents oh, yeah, leave. When it's empty, yeah and they've like wrapped the happened. furniture yeah and i think it's really interesting that they threw out the the family photos the parents and that's when the yeah. boys took it i find that incredibly interesting that the parents threw the photos out like i yeah, I mean, there. I have so many questions just about, like, the psyches of these two people who have this yeah. family, but I just think it's, yeah, I, I really like how they, like, pan through the house and they talk about, like, it was sold to a couple from Boston and, like, these boys are talking about, like, you know, like, they'll never know, like, this had so much to do with, like, our whole, like, upbringing and our adolescence. We're still talking about it, like, all these years later and I love how they did, like, the lighter and how it just, like, slowly oh, pans no, no. at That's the really end. Cool. Like, yeah, yeah, I just really like how it, it completely ends with like but yeah that 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 is a really cool shot when they're uh, like when they're showing the empty house with Mm -hmm. um some furniture covered with black like a sheet yeah or like a sheet or whatever and they it just looks sort of abandoned and like dusty and yeah it's really cool yeah i really i really like that so yeah those are my those are basically mine yeah that's basically it 
Yeah. I think we've come to the end. And as a, as always, I completely forgot to say in the beginning, but I guess I will in the next one that what? you should like and subscribe and do all that <laughs> fun stuff. Yeah, you always say it. Right. You I know I keep forgetting. I need to make a note, but if people have even gotten this far, I hope you have. It's oh, and also it's available on Crackle right now for free but with ads but you know who cares about it's actually not that bad it wasn't yeah, not, not that, that bad, bad with ads you know you just mute them yeah it's fine yeah it's not that bad so uh, they're not that long that either. and yeah. it's on prime it's also on amazon prime if you have amazon so that's another one so yeah i'm super excited i'm glad we didn't really uh preface this one so people i don't know know if it's coming because last ones we had polls so i think people were expecting that they knew what maybe what episode was coming next. So I'm kind of into this whole like surprising people when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fun. Uh, yeah, I think that's it's fun. Cool. Every, yeah, now, it's, every now and again. It is, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, we will see you on the next one. And this was super fun. Yeah. Bye. Bye.